Hi folks, welcome back to the workshop. My name's Luke, I'm from Bradford Creations. How are we all doing today? So, in this video, we're going to be restoring an old, in fact, this old, rusty, pitted, duct taped together machete. So there's a, a young lady who I work with called Amy and uh, her dad, who sadly passed away a number of years ago. Um, he, uh, he used to do lots of metal work and stuff. And uh, a while back, she asked me to, if I wanted to go through his stuff and uh, just take what I needed so she knows it's been loved and cared for and used and you know, rather than rotting away. So uh, obviously I, I was more than happy to do that. She didn't ask for any money. She was, she was absolutely fantastic about it. So to say thank you, we're gonna turn this into something completely unique and uh, creative that uh, matches her personality, which is exactly what we do here at Radford Creations. And uh, hopefully uh, give her something back that she can uh, remember her dad with. And uh, she does a lot of camping and stuff like that. She can take it with her to chop firewood or whatever, or she can display it wherever she wants to do with it. So uh, yeah, let's have a good look at it on the, uh, on the workbench and uh, we'll see what needs doing. Right then guys. So here she is, as you can see, it's, uh, it's in better days. Um, it come in this, the reason I'm, I found it was British Army is because it come in this, which uh, when I saw it, reminded me of the old 58 pattern webbing that we used to use. And uh, so I just had a quick look and it turns out this is a, a British Army, I think it's pronounced Gullock, which is a type of machete. Uh, issued to uh, British Army soldiers who are going into uh, uh, like jungle environments and uh, heavy forested areas, obviously, so they can uh, clear a path. It's not really a fighting knife or anything like that. They are uh, quite a cheap knife as well. I think uh, you can buy one lot like, brand new for like 40 quid or something like that. But again, there's no uh, nothing to say this has ever been issued or used that we've seen so far either. So, but. Like I said, it belonged to her dad, so uh, I want to give it back to her and uh, you know, just give her something cool to remember him by. So as you can see, like all rusted down the side, we're going to have to clean all that off. It's pretty dull. Yeah, it's, in fact, it's completely dull. In fact, before we uh, get started trying to disassemble this, I think what we should do is... Uh, do a quick uh, comparison test for later and uh, see how she does um, hitting a few things. So uh, yeah, let's have a quick look. Right, Tiago yeah, then. I'll keep an all sort of supply of weeds here just for this occasion. Yeah, no. No, just whacking them not cutting at all so yeah we'll use that as a uh, comparison for a little bit later hopefully we uh, make an improvement so as suspected it's uh it's not very sharp and it didn't do a fantastic job so yeah so yeah steel steel's in good shape just needs cleaning up resharpening the handle as you can see is literally being taped together you can see a crack that runs all the way from the front all the way down the back that's obviously happened and he's decided that the uh, best option was to just uh, wrap some duct tape around it effective but uh, obviously not great for what, our, what we want to do we're going to uh, strip this off I've not took this off as you can see this is still the original tape so we're along you're uh, you're along for the ride with me on this one we're going to put a brand new handle on it clean up the blade resharpen it uh, I've got some cool designs that we're going to electro etch onto the uh, onto the side, and yeah. So let's uh, start taking this off. Let's see what we got here. Oh Jesus! This has definitely seen better days. Duct tape just an amazing material. 
Bad shape as I was expecting it to disintegrate as soon as we, uh, as soon as we got it open. It looks like it's a bit of a weird design. So rather than it being like a full tang, it looks like the tang seems to stop here, and then this back bit is just solid wood. Okay, decent sized pins in it as well. Okay, we'll just come apart even remotely. pretty strong. Right we'll get her in the voice and we'll see if we can get this handle off her. See all the rust and stuff over the years. Not in the best shape. Oh, the little Corby bolts. Oh, I hope these pins are going to come out. What we'll do, I think, is we'll. I think they were screws, as in the you know you tighten both sides. But I think they were that's long gone now. So uh, probably gonna have to angle grind these off. So I couldn't punch them out through the holes. You can just about see where they are, if I'm being honest. So what I've done is I've just ground them down um, so the pins aren't there anymore. And what we'll do is when we, uh, when we cut, we'll just drill out new holes in their place, if that makes sense. And then the, uh, as we're drilling them out, we'll just push the pins out through, through the holes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit it with the angle grinder for a long time, get all this back down to bare steel and then uh, and then we can get it resharpened. So yeah guys, let's get on with that. starting to be cleaned up now all the rust is off it there's still a little bit of pitting um, as you can see it's still all rough with the grinding but yeah I just need to do the uh, the top now I worried about the edge too much we'll do that on the belt sander uh, but what I also want to do is this little notch here the original handle come out so it sort of slid on the end and then there was a block of wood on the end um, we're not going to do that. We're going to, 
one around these corners off just a little bit so they're not sharp and we're going to take this notch out so we can so we can choke up on that so we've got a little finger swell here that you can choke up on the top of the knife so you can get more control out of it but that little notch there's just in the way a little bit and then what we'll do is we'll just have the handle come from the where the back of steel is to make it a full tang and the handle will end roughly right about there so uh, yeah it's all coming along now so we're going to hit with the grinder top and bottom take that little notch out just clean it all up So as you can see, we've taken this contouring down. This used to come out to about here and then out and down. So we've done it. We've kept a little finger swell in there just to keep your hand on the knife when you're holding it. You're holding it normally. But then when you want to choke up, you get right in. Yeah, just make it nice and comfortable for the new handle. Yeah, we've done all the top. She's all clean now, so we're going to hit her with a, a flap disc. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to hit her with a flap disc. This is the pitting I've been trying to get out. Doesn't really matter on the handle. In fact, it'll probably help with the adhesive, the little pitting. But um, yeah, so we need to hit her with a flap disc. Get all these grind marks out, make her nice and shiny. And then onto the seventy-two belt grind. Right, so as you can see, the uh, we've got all that down to a nicer finish now. If you look at the back, that's what it was before, all this the grind marks and all that stuff. So we're getting it down to its final finish. Not quite there yet. We're going to hit on the 2x72 bout sander, um, where we're going to take down the edge back to a, a nice, nice sharp edge. It's a machete, so it doesn't need to be razor sharp. It's designed to be a strong, uh, a strong knife, so it can chop more than uh, more than slice but we still want at least some edge on it and then after that we're going to do some hand sanding just to get the finish down we need to drill out the holes for the pins if you can we still see where they are yeah there you can, there you can still see where the old pins are so we'll drill out uh drill out the holes for the pins uh might do some foil work on the spine etch the blade new handle and we're done Hey guys, got the 2x72 running. We're just going to take some long swipes across the uh, the cutting edge of the blade, and uh, what you'll do is just take it down to a nice uh, a nice sharp point, and then we'll just do uh, one swipe across the uh, the face just to uh, clean it up a bit because it's a bit slightly higher uh, higher grip belt than the flat disc we were using. All right, guys. And guys this is the result you can see it look at that nice clean finish on it to be honest i quite like that finish i might not even have bother hand sanding it because i quite like that sort of that finish on it i do there there's now quite a nice edge it's not final finally sharpened but it's got you know if you, you know what i mean it's definitely got a nice edge on it now so She's slowly coming back to life. I think next we're going to take the uh, 
get the holes drilled out for the pins and yes okay. so i had a bit of luck actually when i went to punch the uh the marks uh for the uh for the pins i actually knocked the old pins out so it's actually giving me a good start these slightly too small so we're gonna have to uh open them up a little bit for the pins i've got for this knife um but yeah good start so we've got a, a seven mil seven mil bit in there so uh bit of wd-40 just to uh help lubricate everything <laughs> short burst you don't want the drill bit to heat up too much because then it will just snap and get lodged in your work so short bursts when you start hearing it squeal just back up and come back in right then folks we are motoring along now as you can see she's cleaning she's tidy she's sharp holes all drilled out ready for the new pins what I want to do now, because we're talking about being able to choke up on on this and be able to do more technical stuff with it, is I want to put like a what's called like a thumb grip just in the top here. So what I'm gonna do I'm right there. Then we're just going to use a little file and we're just going to use a corner nice and gentle what we're doing is we're making a little little groove in the top of the metal there and what it will do is it will just give you a little bit of a uh, little bit more purchase with your thumb to sort of grip down probably won't be needed lots of I don't know how much it's going to be used but I like it so that guys all finished now so there you go you see a little thing, little grooves there, all cut in. So when you're holding, put your thumb there, stops your thumb sliding off, holds it inside, gives you a lot more control over the knife and stuff. Right, I think now we just need to move on to putting our cool little etch onto it. Then the new handle. Just wanted to share another little tip for you uh, would-be knife makers out there. So, here's our handle scales. The uh, the girl we're doing this for, she's like she loves bright colours. She's a bit of a bit of a girly girl, but she also loves like camping, animals, and stuff, which uh, we're going to incorporate with some of the design we put on the side. But uh, but yeah, I just thought these would be cool for a a girl's machete if uh, there ever has been such a thing, but there is now. Um, so what we've done here is we've taken the, the, the left hand side of the knife and we put uh, just some masking tape over the top and what we'll do is we'll do exactly the same but not with that bit we won't exactly the same over the top of the over the back of the handle scale what we'll do is we've just got a little bit of prick stick. You can do this with super glue, you can do this with any glue on pricks, it's just what we've got. Um, what you do is you just glue the two pieces of the two pieces the the knife and the scale itself 
get them exactly how you want them. There you go, a bit of pressure on them. So now, handle scales stay on the side of the knife, ready for you to drill your holes perfectly, not gonna move. And then all you do is you peel the tape off and your, uh, your, hand, your handle material and your knife are not covered in glue, which you've now got to clean off. All nice and easy. Okay, guys, so I'm going to get these drilled out. Here's the one I've done for the right side. We always mark, again, knife makers, always mark what side of the knife that handle scale goes to. It will be very, very important when you're... Uh, when you're looking at um, putting the whole handle together. So we've just drilled the holes in the side of the handle scale. We can take these off, pull the tape off. Put that tape away now. Always do a, uh, a dry fit. Also got these really cool mosaic pins. So yeah, push them through, everything fits. You want it tight, but not overly tight. So there you go, you can see the pins coming through there. Excellent. Okay then. Uh, I think what we need to do is, is etch, the, uh, etch the design into the blade before we put the handle on. So we'll do that now. We'll go through uh, electro etching. All right, guys. So this is a design we're putting on the side. She likes uh, animals, nature, and she likes sort of fancy stuff as well. So we've done obviously her name, a little bumblebee, into a butterfly, into a bird, into a dragon. I thought it was a cool little design. We made it ourselves. Uh, my wife just cut it out of vinyl and we stuck it down. So you can see that it's just like a little stencil. And what we're gonna do is gonna use the Electro etching machine, which is precariously balanced there. Um, what this does is it conducts, uh, we can switch between AC and DC and uh, basically use it to eat away at the metal that's on show, not the stuff that the vinyl's on, but just the stuff that's on show here. And uh, when we take it off, it looks like it's been engraved and we can even switch to, uh, I can't remember if it's AC or DC that marks it, but we've switched to the other one and then it will mark the area and it just leaves this really cool effect and I'm really hoping it comes out well. Um, so yeah, so we, we just use this. This is just a little bit of felt. Underneath here is a brass bar and that's what we should conduct. So we dump this in uh, salt water and then we hold it onto the, onto the knife and then we just let it do its business. The longer we hold it there, the more it marks it, the more it eats down into it and etc. etc. So uh let's give this a go then guys. We've also got one for the other side, which uh it says for stew, which is uh, her dad's name. Uh just because I thought it would be nice. Any chance I'll get to honor a fellow metal worker, we'll uh we'll be taking it. So uh yeah, I'll uh, I'll set the camera up and uh you can see how we do this. All right then, so, first things first, cup of tea. Oh, beautiful. Put these gloves on. These are just my teeth welding gloves. Uh, they're made of leather, but they're quite, uh, quite a lot of movement out of them. It just helps if uh, we have an accident, obviously. So, first of all we need to earth it. This is uh, quite dangerous guys. Obviously we're talking about live thing. This is all homemade. It's made by my brother, who's uh, an electrical engineer. But, uh, Salt water.
Oh, it is doing something. <laughs> As you can see underneath there, it's already going dark. I think we're doing this the wrong way. Right guys, so uh, we're all done now. This is gonna be a bit of a moment of truth to make sure she's worked. Just gonna sort this water up. Doesn't look that great at the moment, but I'm hoping. Right, so all we need to do now is uh, Peel this off. Oh yeah, look at that. It's got a bit of a line there, we can sand that off look. Awesome. We've gone over a little bit on some of these areas, but this is just choose a bit of sandpaper in a second, clean it all up. I've got a bit of white spirit here just to help clean all this off. So. Guys, we're ready to attach the handle, so we've got some five minute epoxy here. So you wanna go for as many dry fits as you can with this, like as, as much as you need until you are absolutely happy that you've got everything down everything's going to go together the exact right way just keep doing it until you go yep that's absolutely fine done because uh the last thing you need this as I said it's five minute epoxy that means it's hard in five minutes it doesn't 100 percent cure in five minutes but it's pretty much unworkable after five minutes so as soon as this is mixed we need to move quick so you, you can't be messing about with oh uh i, I need to uh Oh, hang on, I'll put this on the wrong way around, or I've done this, or I've done that. So what I like to do is I like to set up the bottom, bottom one, which is our right side with the R for the right side of the knife. Obviously the left side's there. And we'll mix up some epoxy. So you want, this is equal measure stuff. So what you do is you make Oh my so one of these is the resin and the other is the hardener. So the resin won't cure without the hardener. It's some droid in the tip of this. Okay. So you make two equal pulls just a little bit of cardboard mix it up and it should start going a little almost like a whitey colour there you go you can see it turning now it's a bit hard to see against the white cardboard but you can see it on there yeah give it a good stir you want it all to mix up This can get messy, so as quick as we can. You can see now, you see how white it's gone. That means we've got a good mixture. I'm gonna put a, uh, a good amount on, but don't overdo it, because you're just gonna have more clean up um, in a minute. So like I said, we've mixed this now. We've now got five minutes to get this sorted. A bit of practice and get it done quite a lot quicker but uh, yeah I 
and make sure every single bit's covered. Make sure pins are pushed all the way down. Okay, that's the front of the knife there. Push this off. Okay, so that's on there. And now, some people put it onto the metal. I like to put it onto the uh, onto the slab itself. So we've got the pins which will improve. It's already starting to come up. Yeah, all over. Make sure you get a little bit in the holes. Come on, buddy. Front. Oh, let's see. Here we go. There's one. There's two. There we go. Handle is together. So what we want to do? Try and clean these off a little bit. We're going to sand all this down in a bit anyway. So it doesn't matter too much. Let's get back as much up as we need to. Okay, we've got some clamps. We're just going to come on. Just to help it all stay together while it's curing. Try not to rest your clamps on your pins because obviously uh, you're not pushing the, the slabs together then. So we're going to leave that for uh, uh, probably leave it for 20 minutes, something like that, just to make sure everything's hard. And then all we've got to do is shape the handle uh, and we're good to go. <laughs> folks so here we go we are done we are finished handle is on handle is shaped look at those mosaic pins all the etching yeah really happy with how this turned out from that rusty heap of junk found out the bottom of a uh, bottom of a box to uh <laughs> fairy princess's first machete <laughs> but yeah i think she'll really like it so uh, that's it for today's video, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll play a little montage of it uh, set up on the anvil. And uh, you guys have a nice day. Thank you.